Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to yet another Cinema Discussions video. I'm about to wrap up this series as a whole, but this is one of the big topics I want to talk about before I finish this series, and that is book to screen adaptations. And I want to ask everyone this question is, why do some go good and why do some flop, okay? Now to, now keep, now to answer both of them is of course, the one reason, and that is the book itself, okay? Clearly, everything in the book should write the script. Everything in the book writes the story. Now, what the fuck is wrong with making a movie that follows the book line for line, paragraph for paragraph, and action for action? What the fuck is wrong with with the with Hollywood in general and that is the glaring problem okay and it's gonna be always a clash of visions okay and I'm and I'm gonna put this in as bluntly as possible okay if you're doing a book adaptation follow the author's a vision it's her vision it's his or her vision they hired you Hollywood they hired your studio they hired your director to make their book come to life to present to the audiences, to the general public, okay? That's the vision that they should follow. Not the directors, not the film studios, not the producers, and not the fucking uh, and some, some, and someone else's vision. It's the fucking writer's direction, okay? Yeah, that's why things go wrong. And it's been a glaring problem. I, and believe it or not, I actually was reading something on the 45th anniversary of Jaws. Peter Benchley hated almost everything that, that Steven Spielberg threw at the wall because he wanted to make it follow his vision. And of course, I get it, okay? Okay, this is the, this is the case of people saying that the book is, that the book is actually inferior to the actual final product. And sure, there's a couple of, of different departures, okay? We get that, okay? Because they want to make things, you know, more light, lighthearted and presentable in a, in a good way, okay? They don't want to make the audiences go home feeling sad, depressed, or angry. And I get that, okay? But if it's something like, say, like Harry Potter, you follow J.R. Rowling's, J.K. Rowling's vision, okay? Not Warner Brothers, not the directors, it's her vision. I don't care what what her freaking mindset is, okay? She has her own opinion. She wrote the story. She writes that, and she wrote that story to, for all of us to read and enjoy. And we all did. And of course, I might have said this before in a past video, is that... that Almost every every sequel is either gotten good or bad, and, and it's always been somewhat derivation from every book. And of course, the biggest one is the Half Blood Prince. I I read that one, and of course, to my shock, I was like, they cut out a shit ton. And I, and to me, I felt like if you add those to the to the movie, it would have been a hell of a lot better. And to me, Half Blood Prince was the worst of the of the entire series. Okay, and as and I love Prisoner of Azkaban because it actually did follow parts and stuff from the from the book but there was a whole bunch of changes and that pissed off fans okay you have to find the balance okay that's the thing okay if you're doing this you have to find the balance okay you gotta make sure that you follows the book okay and another thing that really pissed me off is of course i brought up red sparrow okay i'll admit this right now i was excited when the movie came out but i was a little disappointed with the final act now, now, and, and now, because now here's the reason why I was disappointed with the final act. The book, okay, if you never heard of Red Sparrow or read Red Sparrow, and yes, okay, this, the, the book actually describes what life in the CIA is like, okay, what espionage is. And sure, I get, it sounds boring, but you gotta jazz it up, okay, it's all about the intrigue and the, and the political thriller kind of thing. But then comes the crazy part of the last act. They decide to throw a monkey wrench and not follow the of uh, Jason Matthews' vision. Okay? And that pissed me off. I was like, so how are you gonna do that? Why why would you change up the most important aspect that made Red Sparrow the the book a New York Times bestseller? How can you fuck that up to the point of that you're gonna piss off fans, okay? That's what turned me off. Clearly. I would have done the last act a little differently. Everything else, 
followed the book perfectly. They, of course, I did, do understand some, a couple of changes, and I think they, I think was for the best. Some might disagree with me, but you, but real literally, the last act could have been better. All right, the final, they, seriously, how, I don't understand why producers have to change things. Okay, you gotta stop doing that. Okay. I understand you want you want to make things your way. I understand you want to make make something more intriguing and make people think, oh, uh, oh, is there room for more? Yes. For in the case of Red Sparrow, yes, there is two sequels. But the problem with the sequels is never in the book does is there two people on on the inside of the Kremlin. Never. Okay, so I, so explain how Agent Marvel. So, Boilers ahead. If you've never seen, if you never read the book. Explain how Agent Marvel lives, what lives in the movie, but dies in the book. How are you gonna change that if you can decide to make a sequel? Spoilers ahead. We're not gonna see this, see that because you guys keep fucking things up. Stop doing that. And this is why. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm, okay, I'm gonna finally go into this last final rant before I end this episode. Okay. Um. Now, as you know, I am a writer myself. I have wrote wrote the Night Agent Fran. I'm starting to write the Night Agent franchise. I have the first book out. I'm working on the sequel. And I get it. If it takes off, if Hollywood does come to me, and I've said this in a past past video, if they do come to me and they want to make my book, I have one condition. I have total creative control. Not you, not the studio, not the director, me. It follows my vision. It follows my story, not theirs. And if they have a problem, I'm going to take my business somewhere else, else and better yet, uh, you can forget it, okay? Because... The best thing about book adaptations is you have to make sure that the that the story stays true to the source. The source builds the book, the book, and of course builds the script. What is wrong? Wrong is it? Is it? Are that? Are the writers are, are on fucking LSD? Are they fucking retarded? Retard? Read the fucking book, you fucking idiots. That's it. Enough said. That's the final final proposition for everything. Okay, read the books. You build the script, okay? Talk to the writer. Better yet, have the writer be on the on the screenplay staff. That way, he can make sure that it follows the book, okay? Seriously, all, instead of, instead of making sure the script is perfect, here's the here's the thing: just cut and put paste everything in the book into an actual what's my call it script. You, have, you know, details every action, every line, blow by blow, how the how the line should be delivered. That's how it should be dealt, okay? And that and to me, me, there are some ones some good ones that follow the book perfectly. I have, and let's see, besides that, let's see, right behind me, we are not Patriot Games is playing on playing right now. Um and yes, we are not not um I understand there's a whole lot more to that book. To me, this was a really good, strong entry, and I've reviewed this movie before. Um, and yes, it's it do, does stick true to the source. Okay, um, that, with Jaws, I like like I mentioned, they change change up a few things, which, in my opinion, I agree. Like I, that would be a disappointing ending, ending to have to like just have the have the creature have the shark die the way it was. But of course, then again, I know MythBusters, all that blah 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 bullshit. Forget. Now let's see. In the case of Die Hard, well, the actual Die Hard, the the book it was based on an actual book. They changed it and changed it to to fit fit uh, elements from that story, which is good. But of course, the, the difference was the main hero had a different name instead of John McClane. It was Joseph Leland. Yeah, bet you didn't didn't know that one. All right. And then of course, uh, as for the War of the Rings Ring series, there is a big major differences. But of course, here's the thing: like like how are you going to condense? All those epics into like a, into a movie. Of course, obviously, it'll turn out to be like an eight-hour movie. But of course, with, people don't want to be in a theater to watch an eight-hour movie. People want to see something cool, something fantastic. And grant, and I'll, I'm gonna grant all the movies were good. All the movies of the of the Lord of the Rings trilogy were fantastic. The the the, the Return of the King strong conclusion. If uh, the multiple endings, I've talked about this before. Yes, it, it, it teases you, but then you're like, okay, wait, hold on. There's something else that needs to finish up. Then then that ends. And then of course you finally get the final ending. You're happy. You leave the, the theater being mm, mm, smiling. You feel like this was a satisfying ending. Okay, and that's the feeling that I think. Everyone should get and get like like help. We're not if you want to if if another book to, to screen adaptation happens to any anything, I say bring the book with you and just say okay okay is this is the movie is the movie gonna start make sure it features this this and that is it gonna end like this 
Is it going to make me smile? Yes. Okay. As long as it hits, hits all the bullet points that you want to see and make sure, sure, sure the, the studio actually did their work, then I would have faith in Hollywood. But clearly, I don't have any more faith in Hollywood or any faith in the in the movie industry in general because because I don't get it. Okay. Do they not understand how how the how stories work? Okay. I get it. But please. Stick to source material. Don't piss off the wrong people. That's the final final message I'm gonna make it to Hollywood and to everyone out there. Okay, and to any aspiring author who, who if you're looking to make your work come to life on the silver screen, be warned. Okay, you have total control, not the studio. You own own the rights. You own the properties to that work. It's your work. All right. Enough said. I'm sorry for that rant. I'm, I'm, I'm I apologize for, for all the profanity, but you get my point. So yeah, I want to hear your thoughts. Okay, okay. Is am I missing any good book to screen adaptations? Which ones did you feel like uh, were a letdown down, down for you? Which one? Because maybe we can have a discussion. I want to know. All right. So that does it for now. Thumbs up the video. Subscribe to my channel. And stay tuned for some more awesome and exciting videos.